I'm Nako, and I am my mother's son. A mama's boy. She called me Putter, and I called her Ma, Mami, Mom, and Mata, which Mom called her mother. Ah, celebration of life. I wanted to start off by talking about that. We had a conversation a few years ago about someone that we had in our family, extended family, not immediate family, that had passed. This is years and years and years ago. And yes, they did all that in our culture, which I respect and you all know how Indian I am. Um, but it got to a point where it was getting a little bit too much, mom felt too. So I said, I said, mom, when when it's my turn, I want a freaking party. I want there to be dancing. And if there's a few male strippers, I'll be happier. <laughs> so mom actually, I know you would. <laughs> and mom actually said, of course in Hindi, she said, huh, I say you and I It should be just like that. And um, she said, how much can you cry? I good. If someone's passed away, or will be, but in umar mein, in the older age, then unki life celebrate hone chahiye. Then we should celebrate their life. So, mom, we're doing what you wanted us to do. So, for all of you that are like, ha, well, ha yourself. <laughs> and when it's your turn, then people can mourn for you for for a whole year. But for our mother, she wanted this, and no one knew her better than Anu and I, right? Mom, she was loving, nurturing, hospitable, compassionate, classy, beyond loyal, selfless, always putting others before herself till the very last day. She was a peacemaker. She hated conflict. She had a calming sense of like an aura about her. Mom got married at 19, everybody, and um, she quickly became a mom at 21. To this thing right over here <laughs> and um so mom and dad met through hi dad mom and uh, mom and dad met through dad's cousin subhash and mom's cousin shushma at berkeley so they were married and then dad was you know settled and happy here and he's like I want to get married now do you know anyone he's asking my aunt Shushma Masi I call her Masi but she's like oh yes I have my cousin she's from the Kapila family very pretty my dad's like okay show me a picture the dad looked at a picture and he's like how many is like I will marry this woman based on the picture I know that you are a version of mom that she that she wanted for herself, which is highly educated, outspoken, fierce, and a I don't F personality. This is what she wanted for herself, but she couldn't because of just her generation of how she was brought up. And even though that you say that she wants you to like dress down and all this, that's not true. Because she was extremely proud of you. Yeah. So, you're perfect. Prima, the apple of her eye. I will share many videos that I have with you of mom just holding you, Christmas videos that I took and her grabbing you and calling her calling you her baby, because that's exactly what you are, her baby. And I'm so glad that you got a chance to experience a Nani's love, because your mom and I did. And there's nothing more amazing than Nani Maka Piyar, the Nani Ma's love is the best, and you got that. So be very happy you had that for 18 years, okay? And I know you are. So Steve and Kakela, I don't know where my husband is, right there, okay. 
I think that it is very clear to everyone and how much mom saw you as just an, an additional two more sons that she has now. And we knew that by the way she would literally prepare when you guys were coming over. She was already ready to go. Jai was ready. She already knew what snacks to make. If she knew you, bo you both Capricorns, she knew that you loved paneer. So she all would have paneer already made. And and that's just like, just that was her love of showing how much she loved you. And I think that she loved you so much, not just because of your personality, your own upbringing by your amazing family, your mothers. I think she, that was her way of saying thank you because she knew how much her children are in love with you guys and how much you guys take care of us. And that was her way of saying thank you for taking care of, taking care of my babies. Oh, thank you. Cushy and mom work together as well at my company, the Bollywood company, the dance school that I run, that mom worked at for 18 years. So here's Cushy coming into our life at the age of 19. And, you know, I'm like, this is my daughter, everybody. They're like, what is this? <laughs> Who does this? Well, we do it. And it took mom some time to adjust to this idea. But she did, and I think the turning point for mom was when I was sick and how much you took care of me, aside from everybody. But without you, the company would have fallen. And I think mom at that moment knew that you're, I think she saw what I saw from my eyes, which is that you're an extraordinary woman and that she loved you. Mom had one older sister, my Masi, three younger brothers. She had a special bond with all of them. They were all close to her sister, especially my Masi. My Masi um, passed and a part of my mom's, um, part of my mom's spirit also broke because Masi was a big part of mom's life. It hit us all because I think the Kapilas are just so close-netted as well. We grew up with that. And Masi was a big part. And when Masi passed, although we were already very close, uh, although she was very close to my Masi's daughter, so my mom's sister is called Masi. Uh, my Masi's daughter is Puja. Puja is here. And Puja and my mom had this newly found, grown relationship. And now Buja has blessed us by living with us now. She's living with dad and her three-year-old daughter who calls dad Nanaji. Mom was also a great daughter-in-law to the Mahajans. And I want you all to know that. And mom would tell me, so I just, I need to just kind of squeeze this in. Mom told me everything. <laughs> I want you all to know that. Everything. <laughs> So I knew all the details of just her experience when she came to this country and just what all she had to do. But I know that she had a very special bond, especially with my dad's sister, my Buaji, my elder Buaji. And she absolutely loved her son so much. who had been a big part of our family, especially during our tough times because of their medical background. And so we're, we're so grateful for that. She also had a great relationship with Steve's mom, Diane, who also passed, unfortunately, and Bill. They actually vacationed, they went to India together and, and, and had a wonderful time. She had a great relationship with my mother-in-law, um, mom right there, who came from Hawaii for this. And mom and, um, Mom and mom, actually in mom's last visit, um, when she came from um, to the mainland, um, she and mom went to Morongo for the weekend and had a blast there. So mom is gonna honor that memory and go with Kella tomorrow to Morongo for two days. Because mom loved gambling. <laughs> 
She loved the slot machines. She was like, that was her thing. She loved the sound of the coins hitting. Of course, now the coins are gone now. And now it's like a ticket about mom's friends. Mom, so growing up, we had monthly get-togethers, birthday parties, picnics, vacations, Big Bear, Yosemite, Lake Tahoe, Vegas. We, thanks to dad and mom, we were able to make another family for ourselves through these people. And I think that's super important that, because it takes a village, right? So we literally had this ginormous group of family friends that till this day, many of them are here. And many of them will always be here for us. Anta auntie, Guti Masi, Balvinder auntie, Radha auntie, Usha auntie, Urmal auntie, Nita auntie. I mean, I can go on and on. But I have to tell you, mom's best, best, best friend was Manjeet auntie. I don't know if you guys know Manjeet auntie or you've seen her, but Manjeet auntie was a big with mom's other sister. And they had a blast together. So Manjeet auntie's daughter, Sonia, and I um, are also very close friends. So there was a story. Um, so Sonia would call Auntie Manjeet, her mom, and my mom, she would call them Lucy and Ethel from I Love Lucy. <laughs> Because that's who they were. I'll give you an example. So they've done several trips to India together. And so on their way there, there was this man that was sitting next to Luthi, uh, Lucy and Ethel. And mom and Auntie Manju did not like their main entree of whatever they were getting. They were very finicky. I mean, it probably wasn't Indian food or whatever, so they didn't like it. So they just ate the bread and the fruit and they were still hungry. So then Auntie Manjeet looked over at the man sitting next to her and noticed that he was sleeping. And that he hadn't touched his bread yet. So then she reached over, grabbed his bread, broke it in half, gave mom one and herself, and then they're eating it. And then they're like, Babe, parai, are you full? And mom's like, Nay, nay, nay. What else is there? Auntie Manjeet's like, Fruit, hey, there's some fruit thing. Ah, <laughs> Auntie Manjeet takes the fruit cup, and then now they're both sharing that, making sure he's not awake yet. And then now the fruit cup is empty, and they're like, Mom's like, put it back. <laughs> so she puts it back, and then he starts to kind of get up, and then Mom and Auntie Manjeet, with crumbs all over their face, are just staring forward like this. Later in life, mom met another group of lady friends that I was so grateful that she was able to do that. And that is the many women and ladies through NDM that she met. And many of them are here. There's too many to mention, but you'll probably recognize them because they're wearing the biggest earrings here at NDM. They were told to wear big chumkas because mom likes to wear big chumkas. And they were a big part of mom's life, taking little vacations, dinners after classes all the time. And I felt that it gave mom like another wave on friendship. So all of you know that mom and I had a very unique relationship. I was, I think I was her best friend at some point, especially when Auntie Manjeet and Masi passed. I became that morning call that she would have with Auntie Manjeet every day that became me. We would then discuss the same thing that they would discuss about what to make for dinner and what are you doing? Um, just, you know, what did you do last night? And that was our first call of the day. And there was a second call that happened in the afternoon. I was her dance teacher for 18 years where I would not treat her like my mom, but like a student, which is what she wanted. No special treatment, I'm your, you are my teacher. If I'm not doing something right, you tell me. And don't like, don't sugarcoat anything, because then you're doing me a disservice. I'm like, okay, mom, practice then. <laughs> because you're not practicing enough. I couldn't help but have that son protective intuition kick in a few years ago when I noticed that mom was slowing down. I could see that she wasn't doing her movement correctly in terms of it was too fast for her and it scared me and I knew that taking dance away would be just be another reminder for her that she's getting older but I had to make a, the right decision because the last thing I wanted her was to get hurt so I 
unfortunately told her, Mom, I, you, you need to find another class with women your age. And she's like, why? I'm like, because you can't dance with the 30-year-olds anymore, the 40-year-olds anymore, the 50-year-olds anymore. Well, let's make a new group for you. We'll call it the Golden Girls class. We also had this dynamic of working together. So mom was that person that when you entered my studio, she would stand there and she would greet all the kids coming in and all the parents coming in. She was the face of NDM. This was the face of NDM. It's a beautiful face to have at NDM. And then you see this. So it kind of evens it out, right? <laughs> when we close shop, we're done. But some South Asian parents also thought that aside from running a dance studio, we ran a childcare facility. <laughs> so many times mom would be waiting for, th dad and mom would be waiting for 30, 40 minutes. She's like, I'm like, this poor child. Oh, don't worry about it. I was talking to her the whole time. I'm like, about what? Oh, I was asking her about school. And, uh, so she would do that all the time. And that just shows the nature of who she was. I know you're not gonna like this story, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. So Cushy one time asked mom, she said, um, she said, in your eyes, Knuckle can't do anything wrong. And um, so mom's like, yeah, he can't do anything wrong. So then Cushy's like, okay, hmm. So what would you do, Reno auntie, if Knuckle murdered someone? And mom said, oh, I would just say that I'm it. <laughs> so that's mom and me, basically. <laughs> so, but when mom first came to the country, she told me that she couldn't even boil an egg because everything was done for her. So she had to learn how to do all of this and just to you know, make sure that dad was happy and all the dad's favorite things are being made and dad has a lot of favorite things that need to be made. And so she always did a good job with, with dad, but she became a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful cook. And I had the good fortune of being able to learn maybe, maybe half of her recipes this year that I am going to fill my family up with, um, with with their tummies with that love because I now know there's a little bit of mom in that now. So the last thing that I learned from mom, so weird, is how to bisofai the masale, how to make the masala. Because I would asked her, like, okay, then I asked her, just so fresh in my mind, I said, where did you learn how to make this masala? That this thing will have 11, 10 to 11 things. And she said, this is Nanima's recipe. All the music that we've been playing today have been mom's favorite songs. Uh, whether it's Amitabh Bachchan songs, mom loved Madhubala. There's Sadhana songs. Mom used to dress up like Sadhana. She did her hair like Sadhana. This is like a 60s Bollywood actress. Mom loved Shah Rukh Khan. She loved Shah Rukh Khan movies as well. And, um, so that's kind of, and we are doing the mango drink because mom's favorite fruit was the mango. Everything has a purpose. We have orchids because mom loved orchids. So everything, we feel the mom is here in, in, in that sense. My Masi, as, as a young person, learn how to play the sitar. It's an Indian instrument. And mom would tell me that she didn't want to learn how to play sitar. She wanted to learn Kathak, which is an Indian classical dance form. But her parents wouldn't allow her to continue. She did it very, for a very short time. Because in our Indian culture, girls from good homes don't dance. That's how she was brought up. But she always wanted to learn. So I always tease her that you had to give birth to a dancing son in order to learn how to dance. And mom danced at 18 years of recitals, which is two recitals a year that Steve would stage manage for us and Anu would be running around in the back and we would sometimes watch mom from the wings as she's dancing and we would be laughing and we had the good fortune of even dancing with mom on stage a few times. These 
amazing, amazing memories. Some of our pastimes, playing Rami. Mom loved playing cards. That's something that was passed down from her mother. Oh, what am I going through? People keep asking me. I don't know. I think I'm just numb right now. I think if anyone tells me one more time to stay strong, I think I'll sock you in your face. <laughs> I think I will. I'm sick of hearing stay strong. How do you know I'm not already strong? How do you know that this is not strong? How do you know what that is? Maybe my week is being on the floor the first week in crying. Maybe this is my strong. So tapping me in the back and telling me to be strong, I appreciate your sentiments, but I'm being strong. And mom, I, I just want you to know that you touched so many people in our community. We had a prayer session last week, I believe. We had 500 people who showed up. I mean, that means mom was loved, our family was loved. And that is a testament to you, dad, and mom for doing a good job and raising Anu and I to be able to even receive that kind of love. So, you know, good job, mom and dad. You raised some pretty good kids here. I'm gonna end with this, and I thank you for your time and allowing me to get my feelings um, to you. I haven't spoken um, since this has all happened, so I really appreciate you allowing me this time. Life is a dance from one stage to the next. And though you've taken your final bow, Mom, know that behind those red curtains, there are thousands of people still standing on their feet, the longest standing ovation in history, applauding with tears of joy as you made a difference in this world and touched the souls of those who were fortunate enough to know you. Until we meet again, Mom, and when we do, you will be the first person I dance with.